Welcome to YG TV and YG One on One, written by Flex Scripts. I'm your host, Paul M. Newberger, CEO and founder of the Young Guns Movement. On YG One on One, I bring CEOs, business leaders, and more to the set right here at Serendipity Labs to discuss who they are, what they do, and how they got there. YG One on One, written by Flex Scripts, is just one of four shows here on YG TV, our very own channel designed to help you grow and succeed in your career, business, and life. If you haven't yet clicked the subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Do it below so that you don't miss a single episode of YG TV. If you're on the go, you can also listen to this episode on the Young Guns Podcast. My guest today is Dean Rossi Jr., CEO of Accent Property Restoration. Accent specializes in fire and water damage in Southeast Wisconsin. Dean is an expert in restoration of not only property, but also personal character. His success story begins with overcoming hardship and mistakes to get to where he is now. Please join me in welcoming Dean here on YG One on One after this short break. If you're a CEO, listen up. Odds are you're paying too much for your employee benefit pharmacy spend. How do I know? I work with Flex Scripts. They're the PBM police, delivering their average client 15 to 20% savings on their pharmacy benefits. Think how much money that is. Flex Scripts make sure your PBM keeps their promises and meets your guarantees. And if they don't, Flex Scripts holds them accountable and gets you what you deserve. Stop paying too much for your pharmacy benefits. Get Flex Scripts, the PBM police, on your side. Start the conversation today at FlexScripts.com. That's FlexScripts.com. For more than 80% of families, today's medical billing practices are confusing. At HPS, our goal is to improve the healthcare experience for the patient by making medical bill payments less stressful. In Wisconsin, that's all made possible by our comprehensive independent healthcare provider network. We simplify billing and lower costs for everyone involved in healthcare and offer various ways for individuals to pay without breaking the bank. So our guest today is Dean Rossi Jr., CEO of Accent Property Restoration. Dean, wonderful to have you on the show today. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Well, one of the things that I think I might have shared with you is to be on this program, you got to have some pretty innovative socks. What are you wearing today? The smiley faces. Okay. I, you know me, I'm the most competitive guy in the world. I yep. think my gingerbread man with his leg falling off is going to trump those smiley faces. I'll concede. Okay, just do, <laughs> step up the game next time. Next time. Yeah, just next something time, for sure. You know. Well, speaking of stepping up your game, I've been happy to, looking forward to having this conversation with you because I know your organization is really humming on all cylinders. You guys are doing a lot of stuff, thanks to no small part to your exemplary leadership. So I look forward to unpacking that. But the first question that I have for you really is, why? I mean, I've been blessed to know you now for a couple of years. I've enjoyed following the trajectory of your career. I mean, you're a, you're a smart, savvy dude. I mean, you'd be successful in a lot of different things. Why property restoration? Well, well, thank you. Um, and I don't know I would be better in other areas, but I think I'm blessed to be in a situation that fits my, my whole needs and what I'm good at fully. Um, restoration, uh, I think it's because there's something different every time. I used to build houses down in Florida before the market crashed, and everything was the same thing. Five different models, you know, three different options within the models. Everything was just was boring and mundane, you know. I was running seven project managers. I was GM of the company down there. And it just, you know, the market f crashed at that time. So, you know, me and my wife just literally packed up in a month and, and moved back to Wisconsin. And it took me a little bit of time to, to get into, back into the restoration business. And, and, you know, I worked for Uncle for a little bit. And then I started Accent. And 
it's just been a joy ever since. You know, just being able to help people in need and you know, our, our motto is we restore pe uh, property and people's lives because that's literally what we're doing. We're, people don't come to us because they want to remodel a kitchen or, you know, they want a new bathroom. They come to us at their worst time. They have no, no idea where to go, what they should be doing um, to restore their property. You know, there's either water or there's fire, there's soot, there's mold, any of that kind of stuff that's in their property. And there's never a project that's the same. It can be a water, but it's not the same water as what we dealt with yesterday. It could be a fire, but it's a different type of fire. So I enjoy the challenge of being able to figure those things out and help our team get better on each and every project. Now, how has Accent, though, been able to differentiate themselves? I mean, if, if you, and again, maybe this is just because I don't know your industry so well, but it seems like if you know one property restoration organization, you know them all. You see the, the serve pros and all the, you know, maybe some of the big boy organizations like that. What, what, what makes Accent different from all the other property restoration companies out there? Great question. I mean, I think what differenti differentiates us is that I am an owner operator. I started a business from scratch. I'm not a, a franchise. I don't have to answer to franchisees and franchise owners. I'm, I'm not regulated to how and why I can do my business and who I can do business with. Um, I don't have a territory because I'm wide open. You know, so, and not only that, but I think it's our people. You know, and our people really enjoy what they're doing and they're good at what they do. There's a lot, you know, in restoration that's training and and development and stuff like that. And we're still working through all that. It's a never ending process. But I think our biggest difference is, you know, the people and, and where I've come from to be able to develop this company to what it is today. Yeah, well, one of the things that I want to unpack a little bit is here at the Young Guns Movement, I mean, we work hard to ignite the influence of others. And we have a number of people in our audience here that want to become the best possible version of themselves. Several of them want to step outside of their comfort zone and start their own business but they don't know if they should. I have this idea, do I have what it takes? I have this idea, is it gonna take off? You started Accent. I'm sure you had a couple of days of doubt. I'm sure you had a couple of moments where I don't know if this thing is gonna take off. Maybe you started the company going, oh my gosh, what was I doing? So for people that are watching this right now that have an idea, that are thinking about starting a business, how do you really know if that's something that you should move forward with? I don't think you ever really know. You know, there's no, there's no blueprint because everybody would just be their own business owner. You know, they'd be all, everybody would be entrepreneurs. You know, there is no blueprint to follow. I think it is a leap of faith. It is uh, trusting within your own ability to know that no matter what the situations, you're going to get out there and do the job. And, you know, I'm the type where I tell our people if they're on call and they can't get a hold of somebody at two o'clock in the morning, give me a call. I'll be more than happy to come out there and suck water and pull carpet with you if we need to. You know, that's that's what a business owner entrepreneur takes. It doesn't take, you know, you know, you're off at, you know, three o'clock and don't come back until, you know, Monday when you leave at Thursday. You know, it's all those things that it does take time, it takes effort, it takes a lot of stress, it takes a lot of inner ability to, to know what you're good at and, and hiring people for the stuff you're not. And I think I'm just starting to realize now, you know, that it is true to hire for me what my negative side is, what I can't do well, you know. So having the right people and it's not even the hiring too, it's having, it's having mentors in the right situation. If I don't know how to answer something, I have people I can call and say, hey, what do you think about this situation? What do you think I should do here? Or this happened, you know, what's your suggestion? You know, not being afraid to ask the question. You know, a lot of people, well, then people will think I look dumb or people will think this of me. Well, no, I would rather know so that I can figure it out and do it and then keep moving forward that way. Yeah, one of the things that I hear a lot, because I do, I do coaching, I do sales training, I do leadership development and stuff like that too, is, you know, I, I have an idea, I want to start a business, there, there's something that I'd like to do. I'm just not talented enough. I'm not skilled enough. I, I don't, God didn't bless me with this makeup in this regard to be very successful at this. And, you know, one of the things that, that I choose to believe is the great equalizer, the thing that le really levels the playing field is mindset. Right. I think somebody that might be a little deficient in talent, maybe somebody that maybe doesn't have the, isn't the five tool player necessarily, 
I think if you have this ironclad entrepreneurial mindset, I can achieve anything, I can do anything, nothing's gonna stop me, that will trump talent any day of the week. It strikes me that you've got a, a pretty good, solid mindset as well when it comes to being an entrepreneur, owning a business, et cetera. Can you walk us through that? I know not every day is easy for you, but, but, but what, what, is your, what is your mentality as you tackle the day? What is your mentality as you tackle these challenges and what could our audience potentially learn from that? Well, I think today what I, what I tackle in my mindset is different than when I started the company. It's different than what I did a year ago, three years ago. Like everything is, is always moving pieces. You have to be able to adjust to the circumstances that you're having and you know, it's critical thinking. It's being able to think outside the box, being able to come up with a, a plan that you think and feel is gonna work, but doesn't, so what is your next plan? You know, I feel like as soon as I make a decision, I go with it, and then if there's repercussions or something doesn't work, I'm very quick to turn around and, and make a different decision if I have to to right the ship to the to make up for the bad decisions that I made because I make bad decisions. You know, I've built a business off of making mistakes. The problem, the difference is, I feel like is I don't make them twice. You know, I try to learn from everything that I've done to be able to build myself to the person that can make more informed decisions and know where, where you have to get to to be able to get to that point. You know? So it doesn't take necessary talent. It doesn't take you know, a great mind to do it. It just takes the, the ability to want to get to, to there and find the right tools and the actions and the people to get to help you get to that point. Nobody can get there by himself. But is that something you can teach though? Or is that something that you're born with? I mean, can, can, can you teach somebody to want it? Or is that just part of their makeup that they're born with and there's not a whole lot you can do about that? I, I don't know that you can teach it. One of the, the people in my company laugh because I always talk about potential. And my thing with potential is if I have to say you have potential, that means you're not living up to what you're, do what you're supposed to be doing. You know, potential isn't a great thing. Everybody says, oh, well, you got great potential. Well, that means you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know, because if you were great at what you're doing, you would be doing it. Nobody, everybody would be saying, hey, you're doing a great job. Good job. You know, so I don't believe it can be taught. I can believe it can be learned, you know, but it's not a teachable thing to me. And maybe other people it is. I, you know, I can't say that for sure. Every individual is different in how they approach things. And I'm a... I self-analyze, so every, every decision I make, everything I do, whether it's you know, with people or with properties and stuff like that, I, I self-analyze all my decisions. I'm harder on myself than anybody else in this world can ever be on me because of who I am and self-analyzing myself. You know, so I can admit, hey, I made a wrong decision here. This is what I did. Anybody have any suggestions on how to clear it up? or just make, go ahead and just make a decision you know, to be able to come out of whatever mistake I had made. Yeah, well let, let's talk about that a little bit because now you've got a captive audience in me. I think I would be interested in your answer in this regard as too, but you talk about being hard on yourself. You know, nobody is harder on Dean than Dean is. I, I would say that I'm right there in the camp with myself and, and I would say to some degree that's a blessing for guys like you right. and I. It, we're never really satisfied. Things aren't really ever good enough. How do I become better? I don't need somebody else to look over my shoulder. I'm good enough at that myself. But maybe you would admit this as well too. Being hard on yourself has a dark side. It does. I, I, I'm a guy that, and I've, I've been very open about this through the Young Guns channels. I mean, when I was in college, starting in college, I had horrible depression. I, right. I needed two different types of anxiety medications just to function in my early 20s because I never was satisfied. I never liked what I saw in the mirror, and I probably took that a little too far. But, but, but talk to me with some of these hard-charging alpha men and alpha women that might be watching this interview. You, you don't want them to lose that edge. I mean, you want to be hard on yourself to a certain degree. But how do you find that balance between being hard on yourself to get the best out of you professionally, but not being so hard that when you whip yourself, it starts to bleed? Right, I think, you know, people talk, talk about compassion, right? For other people, but where's the compassion for yourself as well, right? I think that's a very important uh, thing is to not just have compassion for other people, but to have it for yourself and, and to not only just beat yourself up, but be able to come out of that with compassion and say, okay, Dean, you made a mistake. Let's figure out what we gotta do. 
and let's, let's move on from that point forward. You know, and one of the things that I do is I tend not to try and look back, right? I made a decision, it was wrong, it was this or was that, let's just keep moving forward. You know, I, there's this uh, TV show, that I, movie that I really like, it's Meet the Robinsons, it's a old Disney cartoon, and you know, their whole theme is keep moving forward. You know, and mistakes are gonna happen. He's a little inventor and he makes a mistake and he blows like a peanut butter and jelly machine up in somebody's face and you know, they all come out with signs and keep moving forward, keep moving forward. And that's, that's really what being an entrepreneur is. You can never stop moving forward. You always are growing, you always, and it's not necessarily your business that's growing. Your business can be, you know, where it is, but you know, your culture has to grow. Your, you know, your, you have to always grow your people. You know, people just don't come to us as entrepreneurs and as a business ready to work. You know, even from other companies. I, I hire people from other restoration companies and my style is completely different than, than the, the big box restoration companies, you know, because they all have, all their stuff is already branded and ready to go. Everything we do at Accent is because I developed it by making mistakes, by thinking about it, by processing it through, seeing if it works or doesn't work, you know, so it is constantly moving pieces, you know, and we have to be vigilant on, on that and, and what works and doesn't work and keep moving forward. Yeah, well, as my kids would say, Dory from Finding Nemo, just keep swimming. <laughs> yep. I never saw that movie you're talking about. I'm gonna have to check that one out. I think that has to do with peanut butter and jelly. Yes. I'm all ears with that. <laughs> it's yeah. awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, one of the things that I really like about this program is, and I think to some degree people could see you and see a successful person. Well, it must be nice to be Dean Rossi Jr. He's got it all figured out. Must be nice to be Dean Rossi Jr. He's on top of the world. His restoration company's doing so well. He's got a turnaway business. I, I, I can't relate to a guy like that. Yeah, he, he's got it all made. It, it's not so much on this program the what, what we do, what we accomplish, what we're all about. It's also the how. Right. How did Dean Rossi Jr. get here? I, I know that you weren't always this way. I know you've had certain experiences, you've met certain people, you've had some successes, you've had some failures. And what I like on this program is people can look at successful people like you and better understand your story. So I'm just curious, how, how, did, how did you become this version of Dean Rossi Jr.? Well, you know, when something I'm, I'm not proud of and ashamed of and all that and those kind of things is I was incarcerated when I was 18 years old. You know, so being able to figure out what I did wrong, how I did it, and then being able to take that and be successful later. You know, it's not, it's not an easy thing. Being incarcerated, everybody says, okay, rehabilitate yourself. Take yourself into society, and society will accept you for who you are at that point. Well, that's, that's not true. You know, it's not, ever, as much as people want it to be true, it's just not. You know, and I had to really define who I was. I had a lot of time to think, you know, when I was there and, and self-analyze myself and how am I going to, one, never come back, which I knew almost from day one that I would never, never return. It wasn't who I was, it's not who I wanted to be. You know, I made a mistake and no matter, no matter the, the level of the mistake, it was a mistake and it hurt a lot of people you know, my family, other people, it affected a lot of lives that it made me see that this wasn't the life that I wanted to live, you know. So then thus getting out and coming out to, uh, and I feel a society that doesn't uh, accept people that have been in, in, in prison or incarcerated or in jail and those kind of things because it, it is such a, you know, down upon, looked down upon you know, and we all make mistakes, you know, but to me it's, and I always tell people, it's not the mistake you made, it's how you recover from that mistake and what you do with yourself afterwards. You know, so not only did I have to deal with my past and, and what I've done, you know, but I have a father that was in the, in the business as well and he, he made a lot of mistakes. He, you know, had a lot of lawsuits against him and so my name was his name, you know, so I had to not only deal with myself and what I was going through and how to figure my life out, but had to deal with his, his issues that he left on the table for me to deal with as well. You know, so I didn't come from, you know, my office is, is in the city of Milwaukee. I'm one of the only contractors left in the city of Milwaukee that's a restoration company. My office is literally 10 blocks from where I grew up, you know, and 
I love the fact that I'm able to come back to that area because it's not the best neighborhood. But I bring things back to that neighborhood. I bring a business. I bring, you know, employment. I bring all those things that people look at what I did at 18 and not what I've done 26 years later to develop that. You know, so for me, that's the biggest thing is it's not a perfect thing in life. You know, you're going to have successes and failures. And part of my drive is the fact that I feel like I missed out by the time that I spent in. You know, and, and how do I get that back? I can never get it back. But what I can do is live life to the fullest of what I want to live it to. You know, and I enjoy, you know, my family. I have three daughters and a, and a wonderful wife, you know, who before she even dated me knew what my past was and fully accepted it without any hesitation. You know, that to me is, is success for me, you know. And who I am today is, is who I am not what I did 18, at 18 years old and 26 years ago, you know, not who my father is, not any of those issues that I've had to deal with through, throughout my career, you know, in the restoration industry. Yeah, well, and first of all, I appreciate you sharing that. I can see by the emotion on your face, yeah. it's not necessarily the most pleasant or wonderful things to talk about. But it's very uncomfortable. <laughs> I, I, I can imagine. But, but you know, you're, you're, you're blessing us with your testimony. You're blessing us with your story. And it kind of leads me to this other follow-up question that I have, too. And, and I, I think the difference between a successful person and somebody who never realizes their full potential, I don't think that's a very wide gap. The people that quit usually quit just before they have their breakthrough. And, and, and I, I look at success and, un, and people that are not successful, the difference is two and four. And I think your story really kind of talked about this too. I think people that never quite realize the full, their full potential to use your word or a lot of the success have a two mentality. Your incarceration. How could society do this to me? How could right. somebody else involved do this to me? Your father, just based on what you said, kind of puts you in a tough position. How could my dad do this to me? Well, when you have a two mentality, it's a victim mentality. You're right. passive, you're reactive, everybody's to blame but yourself. But when you have a four mentality, this incarceration happened for me. As crazy right. as it sounds, this might actually be a blessing. Right. My father and, and what he left me, rather than thanks for doing this to me, Dad, well, actually, this might have happened for me. When you have a four mentality, everything, good, bad, or otherwise, is a blessing in your life, even if you can't see it right away. Right. H how, how was the incarceration, how was this situation with your father a four mentality or, or, or a four result as opposed to a two result right well and for me you know religion does come into it you know i am i'm a believer in christ and um i believe god had a plan you know it i don't talk about those kind of things out loud to a lot of people because i don't want it to seem fake or any of that kind of stuff but <clears throat> my example and what can be become because you realize it is your issue it didn't happen to you you committed that or you did that action and how do you learn from that right that's that's the the difference between the two and the four is i'm willing to learn from my mistakes and utilize those to the betterment of myself and others you know and if people decide hey you know what i'm going to judge you i'm going to say that you're this horrible person hey that's fine i can't i can't stop that stuff you know and i'm i'm a big person is through my struggles with my name and my dad's name and all the stuff is I can't worry about the outside noise of what people may or may not think about me. You know, the people that are close to me that actually know me, love me, and, and want me to be around. You know, that's all I can ask for. You know, this, this whole two and four is, is a lot of reason why a lot of people don't succeed is because they think everything was done to them, as you said, and not for them. For me, I feel like if I wouldn't have went in when I did, I would either not, be, I would definitely not be in this position. You know, I'd either possibly be working for somebody, you know, I might be a drug addict or, you know, heaven forbid, dead at this point, you know, because that was my, my path, you know, at that point. So for me, incarceration was the only result I felt like that could have made such a substantial impact on my life to make me turn around. It was either, you know what, I'm gonna be in the rest of, uh, rest of my life because of recidivism and all that other stuff that, we always hear about, and it's true, you know, I, it's definitely true, 
or I can make the changes that I need to make for myself, accept all responsibility. Like I had to really look in the mirror and say, I did this. You know, I used to go around in the beginning and say, well, I got in the wrong crowd. No, I became the wrong crowd, right? That's, that's what you have to acknowledge and accept. And then if you can acknowledge and accept that, you can have a plan to move forward with that. And it takes, same thing with business. Hey, I made this mistake. You know, it wasn't, hey, my employee did wrong. You know, a customer calls me up and says, you know, hey, this happened, I'm sorry. You know, what can I do to fix it? Or this is what we should do. Or, you know, I don't throw people under the bus. I don't do that kind of, because it's, it's, it's counterintuitive to, you know, to be able to, to do that. You know, that person already feels bad because they made a mistake. You know, the client feels bad. So how do we fix this situation? I look at myself and I'm, I'm dealing with it. I'm looking at myself as a fixer. You know, I want to fix properties. I want to fix people. I want to, you know, I'm very compassionate when it comes to employees and family and friends and stuff like, oh, sometimes a little too compassionate. You know, I, I do it sometimes to a detriment to myself and to the business. You know, I hold on to people maybe a little bit longer than I should, hoping that I can help them change and, and develop into something that I want them to be instead of maybe what they, what they feel or want to be themselves. You know, so that whole process and, and how to get through that, I think, is, is a big thing of, of an entrepreneur and, and being able to get through those issues. Well, help me walk through this little bit of a conundrum that I just kind of picked up. So, so one of the things that I think anybody watching this right now is going to look at you and say, man, this guy is a true, genuine, authentic business owner. I mean, it's obvious just based on the stories that you tell, your level of vulnerability, your authenticity is very high. It's also very self-evident that your faith is important to you. Yet you said you don't want to talk about your faith a lot because you don't want to seem fake. Well, for, for a person who's very authentic, very genuine, loves to wear his emotion on his sleeve, if faith is a part of that, why, why hold back? You know, I guess I never, I never thought about it in that, in that term, the way you're, you're putting it, you know, and um, I, I don't necessarily have an answer for that. You know, I, I do, I, I'm very heavy into our religion and, and my wife and kids are as well. And, you know, it's, it's something that maybe, again, I have to self-analyze and look at and, and determine why that is. You know, that's something I can't answer, answer today, but it's definitely something as an individual and the way I am, I will self-ponder that to, to think about, okay, why do I not want to, to involve that into, you know, maybe I am worried somebody may judge me or think that, you know, I'm fake because I bring that out or say, hey, you know what, you, won't, you say you changed, but this is what you're doing. You know, that is something that you always have to worry about as an individual or you feel like you have to. It's not necessarily so, what somebody else thinks. You know, you, everybody thinks what, you can think a thousand different things and scenarios and situations and none of them will come true, yeah. you know? And, you know, so I don't necessarily have an answer to that, but, you know, I, there's certain things that are personal to me that I just don't talk about, you know? And for me, my religion with, with Jesus and God is very personal to me. You know, I'm a very self analyzer. I think everything through my head, through inside of my head and, you know, self-soothe, I self-soothe myself. You know, those are all kinds of things that, you know, I've done and, you know, maybe it is the time spent alone and having nothing but my own thoughts to, to think about, you know, but it is a self-analysis and, you know, going through that, you know, so there's, there's no de definitive answer that I can give, but it, it is definitely something that, you know, is preached to us that we should be wearing Christ on our sleeve. We should be, you know, we should be, everybody should know that we are people of God and we are, you know, God's chosen and all those kind of things. And, you know, it is important to me, but, you know, maybe I'm just not ready at that point sure. yet. Yeah, you know? and like you said, that, that, that's a very personal decision. I would just look at you as having a very compelling story. What God's been able to do right. through you, yes. I, I think is a, is a very positive testimony to who he is. Just, right. And I think you're a living embodiment of that. And I do believe it is God. it was God's plan. It is God's plan. I'm still working through God's plan. There, I'm not done yet. You know, there is still a plan. Whatever, whatever it ends up being, it's still there somewhere. And we'll never know until it happens. And then you're looking back and you're like, okay, I can see the dots. Yeah, well, well something tells me Dean Rossi Jr. is just getting started. So <laughs> yeah, I, I know there's a lot of runway left. One of the uh, last questions that I'd have for you is what, what I like is yours is a story of hope, redemption, 
encouragement, inspiration, and, and I think society, and I'm, I'm painting with a, a very broad brush here, but society likes to point fingers. Society right. likes to write people off. And it's funny, I'm, I'm watching Rudy right now on Netflix, yeah. and you talk about, <laughs> talk about writing somebody right. off. He was written off by everybody, including his parents, right. and he just had that intestinal fortitude to keep going. And I obviously some, see some similarities here. Uh, if, if you were sitting across from somebody who is just going down the wrong path in life. I know you don't like the word potential, but l let's just say that th this person, this man, this woman has a lot of potential, but they're hanging out with the wrong crowd. They're doing things that they shouldn't. Maybe they have trouble with the law and, and they're just feeling down on themselves. Uh, society has defined me as a nobody. Society has defined me as talentless. Society has defined me as somebody that can offer no value. As somebody who has been there, what advice would you have for that individual to encourage them to keep going and say, hey, th th there is a potential business virtuoso buried underneath there somewhere. Right, and you know, I'm a big believer in second chances. You know, I've lived through second chances, you know, and it, it definitely takes that, the person that is struggling through to, to really go deep inside themselves and understand what they have to do to move forward, you know, and to realize it's not everybody against you. You're more against yourself than what other people probably view you as. So having that confidence within yourself that you know what, no matter what, this, what I've done, where I'm going through, where I'm at in my life, that second chances, you know, changes can happen in life and you, know, you have to be able to, to work through those things and work no matter what it is to, to get past it. You know, and people are gonna judge you or say things about you no matter what you do, good or bad. So why not go after what makes you happy? Right, and that's what it boils down to is is living a life that makes you happy, and you know, and, and being around and surrounding yourself around great people that that love you no matter who you are, and and want to be around you because of the person you are, you know, and that's whether it's life or business, you know, it's the same principles I believe is in both is your life is a development constantly, your business is a development constantly, we're always developing ourselves. If you're not, you're dying, you know. Growth is inev inevitable until you're old, and then you start to shrink, mm -hmm. you know? So that, that I think is the true story. Second chances are there, you just have to go after it. It's not gonna knock on your door. You're gonna have to go out there and you're gonna have to fight tooth and nail and you know, everything I have, I fought for. Everything I have, have I earned. You know, I wasn't given anything, you know? And that, that's the thing that has to be said out there is you gotta earn it. So, so what would you say is next for Dean Rossi Jr.? I mean, like I said, I, I said it half kiddingly, but I really think you're just getting going. I mean, a guy with this level of talent and ability, a guy that has the story that you do, a guy whose business is doing some of the amazing things that you are. I mean, are, are there other things that you want to achieve? Are there other dragons you want to slay, mountains you want to climb? I mean, what, 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 is the, what does the future look like for a guy that has as much talent as you do? So one of the things that I, I'm, I'm in a, starting to think about and process through is I want to start, um, like a vocational or um, apprenticeship program for restoration companies. You know, start getting, developing talent coming out of high school. You know, I, didn't, I, never, I knew I never wanted to go, go to college. You know, so having some out, other outlet besides being forced to go to college when I knew it wasn't for me, you know, is, is a great thing. And the restoration brings so much opportunity for people you know, starting from the bottom at 18 years old and you can grow to be an estimator, project manager, a CEO, general manager, you know, anything that you want in this business, you know? So, so being able to do that and to help, help other people, you know, my dream at some point is to get in front of people that are having problems like I went through and, and talking that out and, hey, this is what can happen. You know, it wasn't, for me, it wasn't the time that was the hardest. It's all the years afterwards of having to feel like, feel the shame and having to deal with all that stuff on a regular basis and you know, define who I am and figure that out with no real source, resources to be able to get people through those situations. You know, so that would be something for me down the line that I'd be enjoyable for myself. Yeah, well, and I can tell you as a guy that has known you for a couple of years, who is a guy that's always considered you a friend, I've always had respect and admiration for you. But I think one of the things that has come out of this is it's just twice or three times what it was before. The, the, the depth of what you've had to go through, you could have quit 
time and time again, but you kept going. As you said, you are an unfinished product. You've got a long way to go. We, right. we both do. But, but all the things that you've been able to accomplish, the lives that you've been able to touch, and the, the, the person that you've been able to become is just amazing. And people say, you know, Paul, must be nice to hold a TV show. You know, you get your face on social media and all those <laughs> other kind of things. Yeah, as great as that is, my favorite thing is I leave these conversations more inspired than when I sat right. down, and today was no exception. So, Dean, I just wanted to say thank you for, for blessing our audience. Thank you for blessing me, and thank you for blessing so many people by being true to yourself and, uh, and, and being a real embodiment of what it takes to have tenacity and overcome challenges. Well, thank you for giving me the outlet to be able to do it. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Wonderful to talk to you. Thank you. What an inspiring and genuine conversation we had with Dean Rossi Jr. here at Serendipity Labs on YG One on One, written by Flex Scripts. Thanks to Dean for sharing his personal story and insight with us. Speaking of insight, drop us your ideas and suggestions below in the comment box or post on Young Guns LinkedIn or Facebook pages. And be sure to subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube. We also distribute our shows as podcasts, so go ahead, give us a listen. Thanks again to Dean Rossi Jr., CEO of Accent Property Restoration for sitting down with me today. Once again, I'm Paul M. Neuberger. We'll see you next time.